Hi everyone, this is Maggie with Esri Canada's Technical Support back again with another video in our Getting Started with ArcGIS Pro series. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to create a layout in ArcGIS Pro. A layout is the last step in your mapping project phase before you're going to print your map or export it to a PDF. Let's get started in ArcGIS Pro. So here we are in my project for today. It's a very simple map that I've got here. It's just the neighborhoods of the city of Toronto with the population density shown in different colors for higher and lower density areas. And I have an overview map here that is just showing the study area. I'm actually gonna switch this over to just be a light gray canvas map. Very simple that will come into play a little bit later in our layout. You can also turn these off for now, I won't need those. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually add a layout to our project. So we're gonna to need to go to the insert ribbon, select new layout, and then we can see we have an option of all the different page sizes and orientations. Today, I'm just gonna go with a standard letter size page and have it in landscape. When the layout is added to your project, it's just gonna show up as a plain white page, pretty simple to start and we need to go ahead and add our maps into that. So we go into the map frames group here, we select the shape of our map frame, we'll keep it as a rectangle for now, and we'll select the map that we want to add. So I will select that and click and drag to draw a map frame. My map's automatically gonna get dropped in there, and we're gonna be able to move this frame around and resize it as needed. I don't love the way that my map is sitting in this frame right now, so what I can do is activate my map frame so that I can actually work with the map inside of it. You can right click on the map here and select activate, or you can go to the layout tab and use the activate button in the map group. Once your map is activated, the rest of the layout will be grayed out and you can interact with the map as you would in your regular map tabs here. So I can change where it's located, I can change the zoom, and if I really want to, which I think I'm going to do in this case, I can open the navigation settings and I can actually rotate my map here as well. So I'm just gonna change where north is located and smooth my map over a bit. It still doesn't fit in great in there, but I think I'm gonna make my frame a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go back to my layout and I'm going to extend my frame this way. So all of Toronto fits. And now I have the city of Toronto nice and big on my map. And you know what? It's the only map we're really dealing with today. So maybe I'll make it a little bigger and activate it again. Maybe we we're fine where we started. Um, so go back to my layout. The next thing that I want to change here is I don't love the border on my map frame here. I think I'm going to want to get that out. So if I right click on my map frame in my drawing order, contents, and select properties, I'll have a bunch of options here where I can change different things. I can change the map that's in my frame. I can change, um, diff I can change the location options and I can go ahead and change the border as well. So I'm gonna set that to have no color to remove my border. And now it just looks a little bit cleaner. I don't have that thick black border taking up space on my layout. The next thing I want to add in is our very important uh, north arrow, especially because we've changed the orientation of north. It's not just the top of the page, so we're definitely going to need to include our north arrow. I can see all of the different options that I have here. I'm just going to go with the very first one, and you can click anywhere in your layout, click and drag, and your north arrow will be blocked in there. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller, and you can see that it automatically orient orients itself to the north that I changed my map to. So I'll just leave it down in the corner here. It's fine there for now. And if I want, I can make some changes here. I can change the border if I want to add a border. You can change the sizing. I can change the symbol, even the color of the symbol. So maybe I don't like the harsh black. I'll go a little bit lighter with that. There's different symbol layers here too. You can do a lot of customizing in this section. Since I'm happy with my north arrow for now, I'm now going to go ahead and add the next element that I want, and that's going to be my scale bar. So just like with the north arrow, I can click and see all my different options here. I'm just going to go with a nice basic one here, the alternating bars, click and drag, add it to my map, and my element 
pain is again adjusting to reflect that we're looking at the scale bar now. Both of them have been added into my drawing order as well. You can make changes in here about the settings of your scale bar, or you can do it up at the top. You can change the format and you can change the design. Both of those options are up here. I'm going to switch this from miles to kilometers because we're looking at square kilometers. And I think I'm going to just bump it up to have five divisions. Maybe it's a little bit easier to read it for. So you can see where you can make those changes in here. As you change the size of the bar, it will scale as well and add the correct numbers. I think maybe I want to change the properties, the symbol properties, because it is a bit dark. So I'm just going to change this to be that same like lighter gray color that I used with the arrow. Apply that. And I need to do it for the other symbol as well, the border. Perfect. And then I may also want to change the font symbol because the text right now is that same dark black color, just to lighten it up a little bit. And perfect. Now I have uh, just a little bit less aggressive scale bar added to my map. The next thing that I want to add in is going to be a legend. So back to that insert ribbon, I'm going to select the legend, click and drag, and my legend will be popped in just like the other items were. The legend settings, you're going to have a lot more options than you would have with the other features. Um, you can see where you can adjust different sizing options, different spacing. Maybe you want to increase the distance between the patches and the text. You can also in here access the legend item properties. So the different items that will be in your legend, you can edit the properties for them. I'm going to take out, for example, the layer name. I don't want to put that in there. I don't think I need it. Uh, we'll leave everything else the same. Maybe I'll change the patch sizing a little bit, make them a little bit less wide, but a little taller, uh, just to kind of fill out the space a little bit better on my page. And I can also change the text symbol here. Again, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter just so it's not so bold. And maybe I'll change the font as well. We can just show you how that's done. Switch it to a different font. Apply. And perfect. Now I have my legend. And I might just make this font all match on the page so that they're all at least the same. Apply that here as well. Perfect. So now I have my legend, my scale bar, and my north arrow. One thing you may be wondering is how do you change the actual shape of the patches in your legend because maybe you don't want to have just the basic rectangle. And that's actually something that you're going to do in your map. So just like you would change the values of the breaks um, or change what the labels are here, you can go back into your map, right click on the feature that you want to change in your legend and open up the symbology for that feature. When you're working with symbology there, you'll have the option to change the shape. So let's say, for example, I just want to make this a boundary. Um, and if I switch back over to my layout quickly, I can see that this has been changed to a boundary in my legend. So you can do that for all of the features that you want in your legend. You can set it up however you'd like. You can change your label here. I'm not too concerned with all of that because this is just uh, going over the very basics of it. So I'm not too worried about what my final product is today, but when you're working on your own, you're going to want to figure all of these things out. So let's go back to our layout. And there's a couple more things we might want to add in today. Um, one thing that we can add is that overview map that I was talking about. We can add in another map frame. We probably wouldn't need it for such a recognizable location like the city of Toronto. People kind of know where that is. But maybe where you're working with your data, it's not as obvious where it's located and you might want to have an overview uh, reference map to show where you're working. So let's add a map frame. Let's go for a circle this time just to see what that looks like. And we're going to switch to our overview map in our map frame options. I'm going to click and drag to make a circle. And my overview area is automatically added. Just move this over a little bit so they're not touching each other. And I have a little map added here. One of the great features we have access to once we do that is we can have an extent indicator added. So because my one map is within the extent of the other, I can add it as a marking inside that map frame. 
So now you can see I have a little box around that indicates where my map is inside this uh, larger map. You can change the formatting of that to change the colors. So I'll make it just like a, a more orange red color to go with the other colors I'm using and to make it stick out more. Also make it a little more bold so you can see it better. But that's just a nice tool that you have there to kind of uh, show people where your data is coming from. I'm also just going to change the properties of that to change the frame. I'm going to leave the frame on this time. I think it keeps it looking clean, but um, you can change the color of the frame just like every other element we've worked with so far in our map. So now we've got our inset map here to show the location. We have our main map feature. We have our north arrow, our scale bar, our legend. And now we just need to add some map text. So we want to add a title. You're probably going to want to add uh, citations and uh, author notes down at the bottom, show where your data came from and who made the map. But um, I'm not actually going to be publishing this. So just today I'll add in the title of the map and you should be fine. So I'll go back to insert tab one more time. I'm going to select the rectangle text option, which is going to create a rectangular text box where I can add any of my map information. So let's click and drag that. I'm going to enter in the title for my map. So just uh, note that it's the population density in Toronto. I can change the formatting so I can make it a little bit bigger. Let's change it to have the same font that I've been using throughout my map. Um, and make it bold as well. Right now it's gonna be, oh, for this font, you actually can't. Uh, different fonts have different options for the styling. So because I chose a specific font that is a lighter font. It doesn't have that bold option, but I can make it the, the size that I want. Um, I can move the box after I've already put in the title and things like that. I can add an underline. I did that using just the control U function, the same way you can do it with like Microsoft Word. Since it's a title, why not have an underline? And there you go, that's how you add text to your map. So you can do that multiple times. You can add text boxes wherever you want to add extra information to your map. I think that I'm happy enough with the way this looks right now. It's definitely not the best, uh, the best cartographic output you've ever seen, but it goes over how to get those basic elements into your map so that you can get started on making something that looks a little bit better yourself. Hopefully you learned something new today and you're able to get going on that mapping project. You should now be able to do most of the work and get yourself through to the end where you can have a final printed product. Happy mapping!